And with us now from Chicago, the Senate Majority Whip, that means he's number two in the uh, Democratic leadership in the Senate, uh, Dick Durbin. Senator Durbin, welcome to you. And I want to start with you just where we started uh, with Senator McConnell, and that is on health care. It is my understanding that the chairman of the uh, Finance Committee, uh, Max Baucus, Democrat, uh, when he unveils his health care reform bill, it will include a provision to tax some employer uh, health benefits. Now, here is what your man, Barack Obama, said when he was seeking uh, the presidency uh, this summer. Here's one of his ads. Just, just a bit of it. He says that he's going to give you a $5,000 tax credit. What he doesn't tell you is that he is going to tax your employer-based health care benefits for the first time ever. So what one hand giveth, the other hand taketh away. John McCain, instead of fixing health care, he wants to tax it. So I have to ask you, Senator Durbin, does the president still stand by the words and what he said during the campaign? Well, I take it from your earlier comment that uh, Vice President Biden has said this is not the best approach, and I agree with him. You know, it reaches a point where you say if you're going to protect uh, a certain number of health insurance plans that are currently out there and not tax them, then you have a limited revenue coming from this source. So I think there are some misgivings within the Democratic caucus. But let me tell you, uh, Senator Max Baucus has a tough assignment. He's worked on this harder than anything I've seen him take on in the years that I've been in the Senate. And the Finance Committee will have its chance to work its will this week. Well, will the president just leave Senator Baucus out there on the limb then? Is he going to say at the start, uh, that is, that's a no-go, that's a non-starter? I mean, how's he going to say? What's he going to say when this becomes part of the plan? Because every indication we have is that it is going to be part of the plan. Well, I, I, I'm not sure I can speculate on what the president will do, but his style has been to, to set some goals and to be open to different approaches. Uh, and we're watching as he tackles the biggest domestic issue uh, that we've had in modern memory. So I think he's going to let the Senate Finance Committee try to come to the best conclusion it can to report a bill to the floor. Uh, and then we'll see uh, what that bill uh, looks like as it finishes the Senate and comes out of conference. Would you yourself, Senator, uh, support uh, a plan and vote for a plan that included a tax on existing health care benefits? Wouldn't be easy for me to do, I can tell you. But the president has reminded us if health care, well, I, I'm not sure. I'd have to see what it does because I'm really concerned about how deeply it goes into working families and, and middle income families and the impact it will have on their budgets. Uh, the president's reminded us, though, if this were an easy assignment, it would have been done a long time ago. Well, speaking of assignments that aren't very easy, let's talk about what the president said yesterday. Uh, he said uh, that he is going to be able to uh, do all of this health care reform that he was talking about without adding to the deficit. Now, some people are saying this may cost as much as $1.6 trillion. Isn't that just straining credulity to say that you can do that without adding to the deficit? I'm not sure we know what the total cost will be until the plan well, is written. Well, it's going to be a bunch. It's going to be a lot. And the president has come forward suggesting $600 billion in savings. And he said, yes, at the end of the day, this must be deficit neutral. The object, of course, in health care reform is not only to provide relief, uh, fix the things that uh, need to be fixed in this system, keep those elements that are good, but also to deal with it as part of our deficit issue. If we don't deal with the costs of health care, uh, trying to balance our budget, making sure we don't pass these debts on to future generations will be exceedingly difficult. So I, I think the president has shown good faith in coming forward with $600 billion. Now it's up to Congress to, to find its way for the rest of the revenue and to really change our health care system. Bob, the bottom line is this. The current system is unsustainable. There are talking points on the other side of the aisle about uh, creating some fear of change and what this might mean. Uh, you know, the president has said, we've all said, if you like your current health care insurance, your plan, you're going to be able to keep it. But we need to fix some things in the system. The costs are out of control. But isn't it, uh, again, uh, I mean, I, we've all lived through a rosy scenario and all that kind of thing where all these uh, savings that can make, be made, uh, and it, somehow it never, ever comes true. And, and in this thing yesterday where he's talking about all these savings, he's talking about uh, reducing federal subsidies to hospitals, in some cases by as much as 75 percent. I mean, is that feasible? Does anybody really think you can do that and maintain health care at, at the levels it is now? 
I think the president's suggestions are reasonable and logical. Here's what he said. Currently, many of those hospitals are absorbing uninsured patients. They're having to add those costs to the bottom line. Our goal is to give coverage to everyone so that each person coming into a hospital is going to have insurance coverage and reimbursement to the hospital. So we can reduce the government outlay in that respect because people will be insured. When 47 or 48 million uninsured Americans have insurance coverage, that's going to make sure that doctors and hospitals are actually paid. Well, another thing he says is he's going to realize $75 billion in savings by lowering the costs of drugs. Well, again, that's a lovely thing to say, but I mean, he doesn't give any explanation as to how he's going to lower the cost of drugs. Uh, don't we need a lot of detail on that before we can even take that seriously? I think it's right to ask those questions, but remember, this president started this debate in a much different way, and I'm not taking uh, anything away from the Clinton administration and their effort to tackle this tough issue, but President Obama called in all of the players into the White House. I was there the pharmaceutical companies, the doctors, the hospitals, the nurses, everyone was in uh, on the first discussion. And he has involved them in talking about actual savings that can be realized. And I think real savings can. Let me commend to you an article that is making the rounds on Capitol Hill from The New Yorker on June 1st, where Dr. Atul Gawande went back to your home state of Texas and asked why in McAllen, Texas, you had the highest cost reimbursement for Medicare patients. And in El Paso, it was a fraction of that cost. It turns out there was overutilization. Uh, there was too many tests that were being ordered, too much expense in the system, and you didn't have good health outcomes to show for it. There are ways to make this system work better, to bring quality and affordability to it, and give people the real choices they need when it comes to doctors and hospitals. Isn't everybody going to have to pay more in taxes, though, to make this happen? Well, keep in mind now, everyone today faces a hidden tax, estimated for most families at $1,000 a year that we pay uh, in health insurance premiums that we shouldn't pay. It's money that we're paying to cover those who have no health insurance and to really sustain a bloated system, a system that really needs efficiency. So to argue that we're going to pay a new tax, we're facing that hidden tax today. If this nets out as I think it will, the overall cost of health care will come down and the quality can be preserved. We can deal with our deficits and say to the American people, you don't have to worry tomorrow that your health insurance premiums are going to go through the roof and your coverage is going to be inadequate. Less than a minute, Senator McConnell says he wants to keep Guantanamo open and he says uh, he thinks there's a possibility that Congress uh, can keep it open. What do you think is going to happen? Well, he takes uh, his position with Vice President Cheney and Mr. Limbaugh. I happen to side with uh, General Colin Powell and General Petraeus. I believe Guantanamo should be closed. It's a recruiting tool for terrorists around the world, and we've heard that from uh, General Petraeus and others. We uh, have a system in this country. We have uh, tried in the last six months, effectively prosecuted 30 terrorists and incarcerated them without a ripple of, it, of, of news media coverage. Because we have a sound uh, trial system and jury system, good courts, good prisons, and a good system of justice. Uh, Senator McConnell is concerned, maybe fearful, of bringing these terrorists to the United States. But today, we have safely incarcerated 355 convicted terrorists in American prisons. We can hold these prisoners safely, and President Obama is never going to release a terrorist in the population of America who could endanger us. All right. We have to stop there, Senator. Thank you so much.